All right, now before we get into really using the program, let's make sure our preferences are set up properly so that uh, everything works as we expect. I'm on a Mac, so the preferences are located in the live menu. It's actually settings now. I'm used to calling it preferences. Uh, if you're on a Windows computer, the preferences should be located in the options menu. Let's go ahead and find these here. Either way, the shortcut is a command comma. It's a good one to know. All right, so a couple things that are good to be aware of uh, in the display and input preference setting. Uh, the zoom option is nice if you need to make the screen bigger or smaller, depending on the kind of monitors that you're using. Uh, you have the ability to change what the tab key does, uh, which is a new thing in Live 12. Normally, when you would press tab, it would toggle between the session view and arrangement view. Uh, but now you have the ability to use the tab key uh, to navigate and highlight different things within the program. Uh, which can be pretty useful. If this is off, let me just show you. Press tab. Now we can toggle between the session view and arrangement view. If I go back, I'll use command comma to go back to my preferences. If I turn this on now, you'll see, let's say I highlight this, I press tab, and now I'm highlighting different parameters here. And what's nice about this though is that if we use this, I can actually switch between different settings by using my arrow keys now. So if you don't have a MIDI controller handy, that's a pretty nice way to navigate around. But just pointing that out because that's a pretty significant difference. Uh, I'm actually gonna leave this off so I can navigate normally. And there's themes and colors here. Uh, so we have the ability to choose from a bunch of different themes here, kind of tweak them as you like. I like my settings, these are good. The main things I wanna get at though are audio and MIDI. Uh, if you want to record audio, make sure that you go into your audio inputs, the audio input devices here, and you can choose any audio devices uh, that are connected. If you do, for example, uh, let me go ahead and choose my 18i8. Once I choose an audio device for the input or the output, I have to make sure I configure the inputs or outputs. So all of the available inputs and outputs are actually enabled. So my mono inputs, I click this button to enable them and it's two different inputs, input one and two, and these are labeled so I can see them when I wanna record stuff. Same thing with the outputs. In this case, I don't need this on. But same deal with the outputs. I've selected my output, uh, my audio interface, and I'm using this primarily for stereo outputs, and there you go. All right. Another thing I wanna point out really quickly is in the Link Tempo and MIDI tab. If you wanna use a MIDI controller, it's important that you make sure that it's uh, properly set up. If you have a MIDI controller that has an Ableton uh, Live logo on it, uh, something that natively supports Ableton Live, it more than likely will show up in this control surface area in this big, huge list of controllers. And generally speaking, when you plug a controller in that's on this list, it should just automatically connect and work. Uh, you should see it here, and then you should be able to choose it for your input and output as well. If that doesn't happen, you can always go down here to the inputs. Maybe you have a controller that's not uh, supported by Ableton Live. You can still use it perfectly fine. You just have to locate the controller in this list for the inputs. You wanna make sure that track is enabled so you can control anything on the uh, selected track. And if you wanna MIDI map the controller, let's say you want a knob to control something else on a different track, you wanna make sure that remote is enabled as well. One last little thing I want to touch on that I think will be useful. Uh, if you already have plugins installed on your computer, let's go to the plugins tab here. You wanna make sure that Ableton Live is able to uh, recognize these so you can use them in the DAW. Uh, for any reason, if your plugins are not showing up in the browser, we'll talk about that in the next video. There's a plugins tab here. So any third party plugins should show up. If they don't, you wanna go to the plugins tab uh, and you wanna make sure that uh, depending on the computer that you're using, um, and the type of plugins you have, you wanna make sure that the system folders are enabled, okay? So my VST2 plugin system folder, VST3 plugin system folder, uh, and I'm on a Mac, my audio units, I guess I should turn this on too. Uh, make sure that the system folders are enabled. If you have any plugins installed in a custom location, you can turn on the custom folder for the plugins. And if Ableton Live is on when you enable these, just hit rescan and it'll try to see if it finds any new plugins, and once it does, you'll be able to use them.